Hello everyone, we're going to check out another new AI model that is able to do long multiple shots of video generation. This is called Holocene. Holocene stands for Holistic Generation of Cinematic Multi-Shot Long Video Narratives. It's coming from HKUST, the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, and also Ant Group. Ant Group is another branch from Alibaba, which was originally focused on finance stuff. And right now, it's jumping into the AI video model space, which is pretty interesting. So, what does this model do? It generates multi-shot videos that are coherent in style, background, and character consistency across those multiple shots. It's not just generating a random 5-second clip and calling it a day. You can actually use this to generate a few hundred frames, and within those frames you can set up a timeline with multiple shots of video. As you can see in the examples, even when your camera angle shifts to different perspectives or durations, the backgrounds and characters all stay consistent. It doesn't rely on using an image as a starting frame, an end frame, or any of those tricks you usually have to do. For example, here's one from their research page. When you expand this prompt, you'll see a scene of a woman standing on a coastal cliff. You get the full environment, the lighting, the sunlight, the whole coastal vibe and even the way her hair looks stays consistent throughout. Another example is this 16-second clip, which features multiple shots in a cartoon style. You've got robots and a doctor experimenting with different plant leaves in an indoor planting setup. Even though it's generating multiple shots over different seconds, the robot stays consistent, the plants stay coherent, and the science lab, as well as the doctor, maintain the same visual style. That's something you really didn't see with previous AI models. In the past, we mostly had to rely on image-to-video methods to create multiple shots. It's gotten a bit better in recent months, thanks to things like Quen image editing, where you could generate scene by scene while keeping characters and environments consistent. But this AI model natively generates video content where everything stays coherent from the start. That helps us skip the whole step of generating multiple images just to stitch together consistent shots. All you need is the narrative in your text prompts. You can cut scenes across different timelines and define the global environment setup right within the prompt itself. So I'm guessing we can use our WAN 2.2 character Laura involved. You'd embed that into the model so you can show whatever specific character you want in the video. Definitely check out their research project page. It shows all kinds of text prompt examples alongside video demos. I'm actually going to use some of those demo prompts in my showcase later on. But first, let's check out how we set this up locally in ComfyUI. You can grab the model files from the official Hugging Face page. This one comes from the Holocenes repo. Inside, there's a folder called Holocenes underscore DIT. And within that Diffusion Transformer Models folder, you'll find both full models and sparse models to play around with. If you look closer, you'll notice that both the full and sparse models also come in high noise and low noise versions. That should look familiar. It's based on WAN 2.2, which also uses high and low noise models for training. And yep, the sparse models have high and low noise variants too. Now, because those high and low noise models are pretty big, like 57 gigabytes, there are also FP8 versions available. You can find those in the WAN Video Comfy FP8 Scale repo on Hugging Face. Just check the file versions and go into the Text to Videos folder. Inside that, there's a Hollow Scenes subfolder where the FP8 models are available for download. As you can see, you've got both the high noise and low noise versions of Hollow Scenes in the full model type. We're going to use these to play around with locally in Comfy UI. Now, heads up, once you download both files, each one is about 15 gigabytes, even for the FP8 models. After you download them, save them in your Comfy UI Models folder. Inside that, there's a Diffusion underscore Models subfolder. I created another subfolder inside it called Holocene and dropped both files in there for this demo. In Comfy UI, I tested the Holosigns model using a super simple, basic text to video workflow, just playing around and adding a few basic features. As you can see, I loaded the high noise model into this section and connected it properly. I also hooked up some LoRa models, like the MPS Reward LoRa model, 
and even tried a character Laura to see how it works. So, let's see if a wand 2.2 character Laura works here too. If this proof of concept holds up, that means we can use our own custom character Laura's across multiple scenes in videos generated by Hollow Scenes. And if that's the case, then yeah. We're basically talking about making our own AI-generated movies right here. For the model connections, I'm loading the low noise model as well. In the diffusion model section, I'm using the load noise hollow sign FP8 node and connecting it to Sage Attention and Torch Compile. Then I've got the Light X2V LoRa set to text to video type, plus another reward LoRa model using the HPS load noise setup. I'm also connecting the load noise model for a character Kate B. Now, here's how the text prompts are structured. You'll notice the global captions field that's based on the format shown in their project page examples. There, you see a global caption that sets the overall scene and characters, followed by individual shot captions. You can follow that same format, or you can do what I did here. Use a JSON-like structure with double quotes and commas to define your global caption and short captions. This particular prompt is based on one of their demo videos, a 1920s-style masquerade party. In this masquerade party scene, there's a mystery woman and a man who recognize each other and have conversations across multiple shots. That's the scenario I'm testing today. So, in the global captions field, I'm describing the overall setting and mood. Then, in the short captions, I'm defining each individual shot. Altogether, there are five scenes, each one just one to three seconds long. By default, we're using 241 frames, so we'll stick with that for our first test and see how it looks. For sampling, I'm using the 2K sampler, which is typical for WAN 2.2 base models. We're doing both high noise and low noise sampling in this generation. From my testing, sampling steps of 8 or 14 work fine. 14 gives better results. You can experiment with other variant settings too. Since I'm using 8 sampling steps, I set the split step to 4, so it's a 50-50 split between high and low noise sampling. One other thing, I'm trimming off the first few frames because there's usually some weird overlapping artifact at the very beginning of the generated video. Alright, let's test it out and see how it looks. Here's the generated result. And I am adding that extra light X2V to the high noise model, the whole sampling process ran faster, but there's some quality degradation too. The motion feels too fast in places, and there are these weird things dropping from the top of the background, and rose petals keep falling randomly. It's not perfect. Still, the two main characters do show up as described, the man in the black tuxedo and the woman, and you can see multiple shots happening. First, people walking in, then a different camera angle, then a face-to-face -face moment, and finally, a close-up shot. So yeah, you can do multi-shot storytelling just through text prompts with this model. Now, I'm going to try some more prompts from their demo page. Since I've got a character, Laura, I want to see if her face comes through clearly. So I'll use this prompt and see how well the WAN 2.2 trained character, Laura, performs. I'll replace the global caption and short captions with this new set. You can use either format, the square bracket style from their demo page, or the JSON style with quotes and commas that I used earlier. Either way works. After plugging in the new prompt, it should generate a scene with this character in this specific environment, following all the actions and shots I defined across the five scenes. The video's done, and it looks pretty good. It follows the prompt closely. The character's standing on the coast, and her face actually resembles my Laura character. So, yes. The WAN 2.2 trained character Laura does work here. If you've seen my earlier examples, where I used KB to generate images with WAN 2.2, you'll recognize this output. The first shot shows a cinematic view of the character on the cliff, looking out at the sea. Then there's a close-up where she's holding something, and the camera shifts to another angle. One note. 241 frames might not be long enough for five distinct shots. We might need to bump that number up a bit but obviously that'll take longer to generate. Speaking of generation time, the high noise model still takes noticeably longer, even with light X2V applied. The low noise model runs at a normal pace, 
about what you'd expect from WAN 2.2 for 241 frames on my machine, so the workflow could still use a little fine-tuning. Some motions feel too fast, and that's consistent. Even when I tested the exact prompts from their project page, I saw the same issue. Next, I'll try the doctor and robot in a 3D lab prompt. But this time, I'll use the default square bracket format instead of the JSON style. So, global caption in brackets, then each shot caption starting with its own set of brackets. For this test, I'll disable the character Laura so the model can generate the robot and scientist freely. This one didn't turn out great. You can barely make out the characters, just glimpses of the robot's hands and half of each face. The close-up shots of the plants don't really convey what's happening in the environment either. Honestly, this AI model still feels a bit hit or miss depending on your settings. There's no magic formula yet. You'll probably need to tweak things like seed numbers, shift values, or CFG settings to get the motion and composition just right. But overall, this is the basic setup using native nodes. You just load the models into the diffusion model slot, same as you would with WAN 2.2 text to video, and the only real difference is using that formatted prompt structure to create multi-shot videos. By default, the video length is 241 frames at 480p resolution, which is what the model is optimized for. As you've seen, results can vary. The Coastal Woman video came out okay, but the robot lab scene was underwhelming. Sometimes changing the seed number helps, other times, adjusting shift values or CFG can improve motion accuracy. I'll keep experimenting with this model because the core idea is super useful. Generating multiple shots with coherent style and consistent characters is exactly what video creators have been wanting, and this makes it possible, natively. I think this could be a solid solution for lots of scenarios, not just AI movies or short stories. Imagine you've got a product you want to promote, you could train your own Laura of that product or a branded character, then generate a multi-angle ad video with consistent visuals, all from text prompts. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Have a nice day. See ya.